our fellow humans, the many kinds of plants and animals around us, we're all alike in one very important way. We all need nourishment. We all need food. Food, in all its forms, is the fuel that keeps the fires of life burning. We humans, and the many different critters sharing the planet with us, get the food we need by eating. Eating isn't the only way, however, that living things can get their nourishment. Take green plants, such as the beauty I'm looking at here, for example. They can't eat. So green plants get their food another way. They make it using one of the most vital processes in all nature, photosynthesis. Today we'll explore how photosynthesis works and why it's so important. Let's start by looking at the word photosynthesis. Photo means light, and synthesis means to put something together. And that's exactly what happens. During photosynthesis, plants use the sun's energy to put together glucose, a type of sugar, and simpler chemicals. Here's an outline of how the process goes. First, plants collect the raw materials they need for photosynthesis. These are two common substances. Water is the first. The second is carbon dioxide. It's a common gas in the air around us. Their roots absorb the water plants need for photosynthesis. Roots are covered with tiny hair-like growths called root hairs. They absorb water from the soil. This is then transported to the plant's leaves, where it's used. Leaves are nature's food factory. They're where green plants carry on most of their photosynthesis. Here's a cross-section of a typical leaf as it looks through a microscope. Notice the tiny openings or pores on its underside. Called a stoma, each of these openings is a tiny door through which air and the carbon dioxide it contains enters leaves. Once they have water and carbon dioxide, leaves have the raw materials needed for photosynthesis. However, something else is required before the process can actually start. And that something is sunlight. That's because it's light from the sun that provides the energy photosynthesis. Look carefully at leaves and you'll see how well they're suited to capture the sun's energy. Their thin shape allows sunlight to easily reach the cells where photosynthesis takes place. And here's the leaf's inside again. The small granules you see in its cells are called chloroplasts. They contain a complex green-colored chemical called chlorophyll. However, in this slide, the chloroplasts look blue because of the way in which it was prepared. It's chlorophyll that gives leaves, such as these giant water lilies, their characteristic green color. Chlorophyll also gives a green color to plants such as these cacti and this Palo Verde bush. Both live in sun-baked desert areas, and to reduce water loss, they grow few or no leaves. Instead, as their green color shows, they have chlorophyll in their trunks, stems, and branches, letting them carry on photosynthesis there. Regardless of where it is, when sunlight falls on chlorophyll, light energy is absorbed and a series of complex chemical reactions begins. These reactions split some of the carbon dioxide molecules plants take in into carbon and oxygen atoms. The same thing happens to some of the water molecules plants absorb. They're broken apart into hydrogen and oxygen atoms. Some of the resulting carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen atoms then join together to make glucose, a kind of sugar. This glucose contains stored energy which came from the sun. 
Plants do different things with the glucose their photosynthesis produces. They use some of it right away as food to provide the energy they need to carry on their life processes. Plants can also change some of the sugar they make into starch and store it for later use. And here we see some of that stored energy. Whenever we plant on potatoes, yams, and similar foods, we're eating food which plants stored in their roots as starch to meet their future energy needs. Plants also store energy in their seeds, or as we sometimes call them, grains. Later, this stored food energy is used by the young plants that sprout from these seeds. We humans also benefit greatly from these energy-rich foods, both by eating them ourselves and by feeding them to our animals. But as important as it is, photosynthesis provides more than just food alone. Take, for example, breathing. It may be hard to believe, but without photosynthesis, we couldn't. And that's because the world's oxygen supply is a byproduct of photosynthesis. Here's how. Remember how earlier we learned that during photosynthesis, plants use light energy to split water molecules into hydrogen and oxygen atoms? Plants use some of the oxygen atoms for their own life processes. Some of them, however, are released into the air around them. We humans breathe this oxygen, the oxygen photosynthesis produces, as do all the many other critters, both big and small, that share the planet with us. In addition, some of the oxygen photosynthesis produces becomes dissolved in the world's waters. This is the oxygen that fish and other aquatic critters such as this crab use. And then there are our fuels. Believe it or not, nearly all the fuels that do such things as power our vehicles, cook our food, and keep us warm come to us thanks to photosynthesis. Called fossil fuels, much of the energy we use comes from fuels formed from the remains of green plants and other organisms that lived and carried on photosynthesis billions of years ago. Since then, their remains have changed into natural gas, oil, and coal. Today, when we bring these fuels, we are actually reaching back into time and benefiting from energy that photosynthesis captured from the sun hundreds of millions of years ago. As we've seen today, Photosynthesis is one of nature's most important processes. Powered by the sun's energy and fueled by water and carbon dioxide, photosynthesis not only gives us and countless other living things food, it also provides the oxygen we and other organisms breathe, as well as fuels to warm us and power our vehicles. Now let's take a few minutes to answer some questions. They'll help you remember the key points we covered today. The directions are simple. When you hear this tone, check either true or false, or fill in the blank with the correct word. Good luck, and let's get started. True or false? One of the raw materials used by green plants during photosynthesis is the gas carbon monoxide. True or false? Plants can store some of the food they manufacture as starch. True or false? The tiny holes through which gases enter and exit leaves are called chloroplasts. True or false? During photosynthesis, green plants manufacture a sugar called glucose.
Now let's change the way we're doing things. Instead of checking true or false, just fill in the blanks with the correct words after you hear the beep tone. During photosynthesis, water molecules are split into atoms of oxygen and Roots absorb the water they need for photosynthesis through tiny outgrowths called Because they are produced from long dead plants and other organisms, coal, gasoline, and oil are often called fuels. Green plants get their color from a chemical called The energy plants used during photosynthesis comes from the During photosynthesis, sunlight provides the energy to split molecules of carbon dioxide and 